and Andrew Lemon from the Edge Software Consultancy. In this video, we're going to introduce to you the Barrels Cascade solution. Barrels Cascade provides an effective solution for driving down cycle times and improving project workflow. Let's start by introducing some of the objectives of this presentation. First of all, we're going to introduce the Cascade concept. Then I'm going to show you how to create a project request. And finally, how a service team can manage the incoming requests and optimize their performance. Barrels Cascade can be used to track the progress of the project from initiation right through to completion. It does this by tracking project-based requests, which are then submitted, can be planned and scheduled, the experiments executed and the results and knowledge pumped back to the requesting users in the project teams. Baras Cascade provides complete traceability, tracking and transparency on the overall process, putting project teams in touch with the progress of their requests and giving delivery teams the freedom to optimize their performance. Baras Cascade has a number of benefits. It provides traceability for project-related requests right across the cascade from early research to candidate selection. Importantly, Cascade also supports optimization of the process through the use of progression rules, which automate the process of moving items through the cascade of different requests and services. Let's start by having a look at Barrel's Cascade. First of all, I'm going to log on to the server as a project team member. I'm a project team member. I'm working in one of these drug discovery projects. In this case, I'm working under the cancer therapeutic area. And I'm working on the project L0103. First thing I'm going to do is create a request. I'm going to select the project I'm working on. A request ID is automatically generated by the system. I can select what sort of item I'm going to submit to my request. In this case I'm going to submit a list of compounds, but I could equally make requests based on other items such as libraries, users and other entities in the system. Now I'm going to pass a message to the service team. I can give a priority and also a target date. Now I can select my items to be tested. In this case, the compounds are being directly looked up from the compound registration system in the organization. I can also put in a list of items. As the items are added, if the system was connected up to a live inventory system, a message will be passed back telling me whether these items are in stock or not. This will avoid me submitting unnecessary requests for items that are out of stock. Now I'm going to select which services I'm going to run. In this case, I want to run in the last day's inhibition. I'm also going to run a panel of assays. If this system was connected to a live inventory system, the request wizard would have immediately checked for availability, target delivery dates, checked to see if this compound had been tested before in this assay, also allowed me to reorganize the priorities, tell me if it was having to be transferred from different sites and also manage any other properties that come with the request. I can also supply extra information for the assay such as any warnings about safety issues 
I may also be able to specify a particular receptor that should be used for the assay. The final step is to check the compound selected and the services requested and confirm the request. This provides me with a request dashboard. I can see at the moment that my, all my requests are brand new and nothing is going on with the request. From this dashboard we can check the status of all the requests for each service against each compound. Once those services are complete we can access the results directly from the request and query for the results. Now I'm going to take the position of the service provider. First of all I'm going to look at a list of all the services that being which are available in the system. I can review the name of the service, which team are running this particular service, any new or active items. I also show details of the service. In this case I'm going to go and have a look at the GI panel service queue. This provides me with a list of all the incoming compounds. I can also group by project. So in this case I can see there are two requests for the L103 and also a number of requests for the GL205 project. Let's move all those into a work package. I've now accumulated all of those different requests into one experiment. The first thing I'm going to do is update the status of the request items. This acts as a trigger for the system to make a real order in the inventory system. Because at this point I have accepted these items into the, my service group ready to be processed. I can either wait for that to happen asynchronously or I can press the process orders button and have it done immediately. Once the stock arrives I will then add in an experiment name select the method I'm going to run, in this case it's the GI panel process select the expected end date and then create the work package What this does is provide an area or a data frame to post the results. At this point I can do one of two things. I could either run the complete assay within the Barrels LIM system or I can make use of this data frame to post data from other systems. For example, I may run this experiment in a third party LIMS or another electronic lab notebook or another data management system. Barrels provides an open access method for getting data from external systems back into the Barrels request system. In this case, I'm just going to manually fill them in. Now, if I go back and review my requests, I can see my request. I can now see that the GI panel items are now in process. In this way I can track the progress of the project in terms of the requests that are being made. And of course I can access the results at any time. If you'd like to find out more about the Barrels Cascade solution, visit our website at www.edge-ka.com. Thank you for your attention.